Let's have a look at a crucial A-level physics revision question. Less than one-fifth of the candidates scored any marks on the last part. So here is the actual question. We have a graph of displacement s against distance x for a progressive wave, and this is a time t is equal to zero. We're also given the direction of travel. The phase difference in radians between the points on the wave at x is equal to 1.5, so that's this point over here, and x is equal to 2.5 is they differ by half a wavelength and we want to express our phase difference in radians. Half a wavelength will correspond to 180 degrees since one complete wave cycle is 360. So in radians, 180 will just be pi radians. Now the examiner's report identified the next part as challenging. We need to find the displacement s at time t is equal to 3 quarters t at x is equal to 1.5 centimeters. In other words, they are just asking us what's going to happen to this point 3 quarters of a time period later. Well, if we have a look at this picture, I always tend to think, imagine that you're at this point over here, so maybe you're on a boat, what's going to happen to this person? Well, they're going to have a wave that is traveling towards them. First, they're going to move to a displacement of five centimeters, then they're going to go down back to zero, and then they will reach minus five and so on and so forth. Three quarters of a time period well, if you think about it, this will correspond to this region because this is essentially three quarters of the cycle. And at the end of that, we're going to be at minus five centimeters of displacement. Okay, so a beam of coherent light of wavelength lambda is incident normally at two parallel slits. This essentially is the double slit experiment, series of bright and dark fringes of Form. The location of some of these fringes is shown. So we have bright fringes at point M, O, and Q. The dark fringes are seen at points N and P. State the phase difference in degrees and the path difference D in terms of the wavelength lambda for the waves from the two slits meeting at point M. P. Point P is going to be the second minima that we actually see. Now, in terms of the wavelength, the path difference is going to be half a wavelength over here. And at P, it's going to be half a wavelength plus another wavelength, which is going to be a half plus one is three halves wavelengths. Converting that to a decimal, three halves is just 1.5 lambda. In terms of phase difference, at point N, the phase difference is going to be 180 degrees, and at point P, it's going to be 180 plus another cycle, which is 360 degrees, so 180 plus 360 is going to give me 540 degrees. Part C, a student is doing an experiment to determine the speed of sound in air by producing stationary waves inside a horizontal glass tube. Fine powder is sprinkled inside the tube. Really cool experiment. A loudspeaker is placed close to the open end of the tube. The other end of the tube is closed. Okay, suggest why the powder piles up at the nodes within the tube. So the idea here is that we have a stationary wave which is formed from the sound wave that is being reflected backwards, interfering, superposing with the original wave, creating nodes and antinodes. At the points where we have a node, we're going to have zero displacement and the powder will not be moving. Let's see if we can word that. Next part, we need to use the figure to determine the speed of sound v. Well, the speed of sound is going to be equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. We're given the frequency here, it's 2.72 kilohertz, so all we need to do is determine the wavelength. We're given that this distance here is 25 centimeters, and we also know that the node to node distance is actually just equal to half a wavelength. This here is half a wavelength, and this here is half a wavelength, and so on and so forth. So we can say that 4 
half wavelength is equal to 25.0 centimeters. Lambda will just be equal to 50 over 4, which is just equal to 12.5 centimeters. Okay, back to the original wave equation. So V will be equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. The frequency was 2.72. Multiply this by 10 to the power of 3 for kilohertz. Multiply this by 12.5. Now this here is in centimeters, so we need to multiply this by 10 to the power of minus 2. Oh, look at that. It's exactly 340 meters per second, which is pretty much the speed of sound. So we know that this answer is probably correct. Next one. And this is the question that less than a fifth of the candidates could score any marks. So let's have a look. Okay, so we need to determine the minimum frequency of the stationary wave that can be formed within this tube. So now we're varying the frequency and hence the actual wavelength to see what's the minimum frequency that can be formed within this tube. So the minimum frequency is going to correspond to the maximum wavelength, which, hap which happens when we have a node and an antinode here, which means that the length of the tube is going to be equal to a quarter of the wavelength. You can kind of think of this as this being a quarter of a cycle. So the idea in this question is that we're going to use the famous wave equation and to determine the frequency we have the speed of sound but what we need is the wavelength and to get the wavelength we are going to need the length of the tube. What is actually the length of the tube? Is that given in the question? Well, not really. We're just given this distance to be 25.0 centimeters. The total length is going to be the distance from here to here. And this here is the distance from node to node. So that's another half a wavelength. But this distance here is going to be half of that. So this here is lambda over 4. So back to the previous case, we can use some of the information from the previous part to determine the length of the tube. The total will be given by this distance here, which is 25 centimeters. So 25 plus this distance here, which was half of that wavelength in that part of the question. So half of that wavelength was 12.5, divide that by two. This is just from the previous part. And then plus another one, which is half of this distance in turn, which is a quarter of the wavelength. The distance between a node and an antinode is a quarter. So it's gonna be 12.5 over four. Let's see what that gives us. Giving us a total length of 34.375 uh, centimeters. So the wavelength is actually going to be equal to four times that. So it's gonna be 4L. So this is gonna be four times 34.375, which is equal to 137.5 centimeters. We're now ready to plug that back into this equation, which is going to allow us to finally determine the frequency. So speed of sound was 340, divide that by 1.375. Let's see what that gives us. Giving us up to three significant figures, 247 hertz. Most A-level marks are actually lost in describe and explain questions. And this is precisely why you absolutely must have a look at this next video, which goes over on exactly how to tackle these questions. Click over here.